So we go ahead for the second short communication, which is uh, a combination of a German and Bulgarian study. So Judith Kron, can you please come up and uh, present your data on hormone treatments in puerperium in dairy cows? Um, thank you for the introduction and of course for the opportunity to present um, some German science here. Um, the study I want to talk about is about um, the effects of hormone treatments in dairy cows during the early puerperium on fertility parameters. Um, first, I will give a short introduction about the background of the study and define the aim. Afterwards, um, I will explain material and methods, come to the relevant results, and in the end, give the conclusions that we can derive. Hormone treatments, um, especially in the early period after parturition, are very popular in intensive dairy farming. Um, as other speakers pointed out as well, um, the fertility of the dairy cows has declined for a long period over the last years. Furthermore, the incidence of pathological development in the puerperium is increasing, which leads to prolonged periods between calving and the first regular cycles which can be used for the next inseminations. For economic reasons, um, enhancement of the involution of the genital organs is necessary. As the uterine clearance is linked to cyclic ovarian activity, the um, induction of estrus with GnRH is a plausible strategy. Another approach is to induce um, the uterine um, involution via prostaglandins and a combination of both protocols is also common. The results in literature are controversial and existing studies are designed very differently, which makes a comparison even more complicated. Therefore, the aim of this study was to administer gonadotropin releasing hormone and prostaglandins and a combination during the first two weeks after parturition in a defined protocol to achieve comparable results. The following questions were to be answered by the investigation. Whether the treatment with GnRH or prostaglandins actually affects the puerperal performance of the cows, whether there is a difference between animals with a disturbed or undisturbed puerperium, and if productivity or fertility of the animals are influenced by the hormone treatment. In the study, a total number of 305 Holstein Friesian dairy cows was included. Um, the cows were, 40% um, of the cows um, were heifers shortly after their first calving, 30% um, awaiting their second lactation, and the rest had three or more lactations. Um, about 70% of the calvings were spontaneously and without um, any problems. 28% required mild to moderate assistance, and 2% of the carvings were um, severely difficult. Um, between 11 to 14 days after carving, all cows were examined and distinguished into animals with a disturbed or undisturbed puerperium. Um, the cows of, um, sorry, symptoms for um, disturbed puerperium were retention of fetal membranes, abnormal size of the uterus, or vaginal discharge with aberrant color, viscosity, or smell. Um, after being sorted into the groups, um, the cows were randomly divided into three treatment groups and treated with one of the mentioned protocols. Um, the cows in group one received 25 milligrams of dinoprost, which is a synthetic prostaglandin and acts analog to BGF2-alpha. Cows of the second group received 50 micrograms of gonadotropin which is a synthetic agonist of GnRH and induces the release of FSH and LH. Seven days later, those cows were treated with Dinoprost. The third group was to control and was injected with one milliliter of saline solution. Puerperal controls of the cows were performed following the diagram you see here. Between 11 to 14 days after calving, all cows were examined rectally by palpation and ultrasound. Localization, size, and content of the uterus were recorded. A vaginal examination was not performed. Any secretion being present in uterus or vagina was messaged out rectally. 
At this time, the treatment was administered. A second pure oral control was performed um, 25 to 31 days um, after calving, and the same parameters were recorded. Um, any animal showing abnormal vaginal discharge um, in one of the examinations after the first treatment was um, injected with dinoprost. A third and fourth pure oral control was only performed in those animals at the mentioned times you see. Um, in those animals um, showing abnormal vaginal discharge in a previous examination or during the time in between two visits. This was recorded by the farmer or the employees. The productivity of the animals participating in the study was assessed using different parameters. The back fat thickness as an objective tool to determine the physical status of the cows was measured at three defined periods. For the first time, approximately two weeks before calving. The second measurement was done two weeks after calving, and the third was carried out 60 to 66 days in lactation. Furthermore, the average daily milk yield um, during the first 100 days of lactation was assessed using data from monthly applied milk inspections by the Association of Thuringian Dairy Breeders. The fertility of the animals um, was um, assessed using common fertility parameters described in, in the literature you see listed above. The data was taken from a herd control program commonly used in the veterinary herd health management. Um, with statistical methods, um, the influence of the hormone treatment on fertility and productivity of the animals was calculated. The following relevant results were achieved in the study. Um, the treatment with prostaglandins or a combination of GnRH and prostaglandins in pure dairy cows did not have a positive influence on the uterine involution. Um, the incidence of vaginal discharge in all the animals that were investigated was not reduced and none of the investigated fertility parameters um, was um, actually influenced. Um, the discovered effect was not dependent on milk yield, body condition of the cows, or its decrease during the early lactation period. Um, we did actually have some results basically regarding the body condition and distinct other parameters you see presented here. So a good body condition after calving um, led to less disturbances of the puerperium, and the given p-value refers um, to the puerperal performance between 39 to 45 days after calving. In contrast, the body condition before calving did not have an influence on puerperal development or fertility. A distinct decrease of the body condition up to 66 days in lactation um, resulted in a um, reduced first service conception ratio and a low body condition um, at the mentioned period um, was combined with a lower pregnancy ratio. In conclusion, um, hormone treatments with PGF and GnRH in the early puerperal period did not have a positive effect on um, the uterine um, involution in the postpartum dairy cows. There was no difference discovered between animals with a disturbed or undisturbed puerperium. And the only factor having an effect on puerperal performance and distinct fertility parameters was the body condition. Um, in conclusion, um, I have to admit that um, hormone treatments in the early postpartum period um, are not very promising, and it seems um, that it's a lot better approach to um, enhance the physical status um, of the cow um, than to expect success by hormone treatments very shortly after calving. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judith. Are there any questions, please? Yes, please. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Just a quick question. Were you, a, were you able to evaluate whether your treatment did include, um, induce cyclicity in the cows? Like, did you get them to 
you start cycling and therefore you were expecting an effect in poor period or you don't even know if you got them into cycling again? Um, um, there was no um, assessment of the cyclic activity of the cow, so um, it was not really combined um, with the cyclic activity um, um, in the cows that we um, examined. So we don't. Um, and I think um, it was, the thing is that it was not really um, the aim to discover whether the cyclic activity um, was actually going in combination, but it was rather um, the effect on the puerperal um, development of the uterus, so we didn't. But you don't think the effect of body condition score may have been um, associated with return to cyclicity and then uh, improve evolution in any way? So you think the body condition was actually in combination um, with the cyclic activity? Well, no, I'm just thinking if you, if you make any connection how the body condition score will have directly affected uh, the effect on the porperium. Um, well, um, it's, it's actually um, known that um, the body condition influences um, not only the pure performance, but also um, the fertility of the cow. So that's actually um, not very surprising. Second question. Um, actually, it's in the same line. Um, I was wondering if you evaluated those cows when you first gave the first injection, which, if I remember correctly, was about day 11 to 14. Did you palpate those cows to see what structures they had in the ovaries? Because with activity meters, we do get to see the first heat, activity heat, between day 10 and 15. So if you give a prostaglandin on those days, there's no CL to work on it. Um, yeah, I know. Um, we didn't um, record um, whether there were um, active structures on the ovaries, and um, the administration of prostaglandins was um, rather for the effect on the um, uterus than on the ovaries. So it's um, not so much the link between um, the corpus luteum, but rather with the uterus. Thank you, okay. Following the time schedule, we go up to the next speaker.